Many years ago, a database was something simple. So we could run on our 8-bit computers. And even when it went to 16-bit, it was still fairly easy to use for names and addresses, etc. But as the years went on, they became more complicated. So if you wanted a simple database, I'm afraid you had to get the entire lot of kitchen sink as well. And there's lots of different types of databases now, all just so you can keep some simple recipes or addresses. Never mind the hardware that needs to run them. But in this video, I'm going to show you a simple database that could run on your desktop computer. Right, you can PKG install Symphytum or change the user ports database Symphytum, make install clean. It's really easy to install and get going. Right, when you first start the program up, you get an example database. If you want to create a new database, you click on the new collection, and that's what they call the database. It's a new collection. And put test. The six buttons at the top do the same functions for different areas. The first three allow you to create, duplicate, and delete records. And the second three allow you to do the same with fields. Seeing as we've just started a new collection, we need to click on create field. That will let you choose what type of field you want. But for this one, we're just gonna need text and we're gonna change it to name. So we're just gonna create a simple database of people's name, phone number, and email address with a little picture as well to identify them. And you can determine whether it wants to be required field, in which case it should be. You need the name and we'll just finish with that. So once that's been defined, if we go up to create a new record, and there it is, there's the field that we just defined and it's highlighted pink because it's a required field. Right, so I'm just gonna put Robo Nuggie there. And we'll click it again for another new record. If you wanna put another name in, in case we're gonna put my first name. And we'll click it again for, oh, I don't know, let's put, we'll put free BST in. We'll keep it to three little entries. There you go, just flick through them. And if you look at the table version of the entries that we just made, there you are from more traditional form. If we just go back to form. Right, so we're just gonna create a new field. And this time it's gonna be a number. It's gonna want the telephone number. So just put mobile. And next, um, it's not gonna be a required field because not everybody perhaps will have a number. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And there it pops up. It's not highlighted in a color because uh, it's not a required one this time. So I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Because we defined it as a number, if you need to split up the number somewhere by using a hyphen, it won't let you do it. So you might want to consider using text, but in this case, we're going to keep it as a number. You can add it to the other entries that we created. And there we go, yeah. So yeah, we need a new field and that's going to be an email address. So let's go down to uh, Blink if you had a web page, but we're going to keep it email address. Just type in email. Next, again, it's not going to be required. And we'll add another one before we start filling that in, and that's going to be the image, or the logo, or the profile picture, etc., whatever you want to call it. So we're just going to uh, give it a name. We're going to call it profile. And finish that. And you can drag a picture into the area where the picture is going to be. So I'm just dragging some over from a folder that's off screen. I'll just give each one an appropriately different picture. Yeah, let's go back and there's each one looks like, it's very nice. I'm just going to fill in the email address. It's not a real email address, but it will do for demonstration purposes. And finally, FreeBSD. I'll give this a proper looking email address on this. FreeBSD at FreeBSD.org. I don't know if it's a real one, but another freebsd.org is. So yes, very nice. Each one's filled out. And this again is the table view. So it's uh, very nice and neat. If you prefer that version, I prefer to look at it like this. If you're happy with that, you should save it. Or in this case, they call it a backup. So it will save it to uh, the default. In this case, it's documents folder. Give you the, the uh, date and name of it, etc. You can call it whatever you want. So I'll just back up and finish. And there we go. To show you the 
restore from the backup in action. I'm just going to delete the collections. There you go, it's all empty. And we go down to backup and restore backup. And it should, but well, we'll go to the one that we've saved, and there it is at the top. There we go. And restore. It unusually needs you to uh, restart the program for it to restore it, but there it is. And there's the two. There's the example, the one that we started with. And there's the one that we created. And so there we go. There is an option so you can export or import to other database software or spreadsheets. It doesn't export the uh, graphical image that we put down, but it will, it will keep it in the... Uh, in the table format. So you get some basic things. You can select all records, lock form view, uh, simple edit mode, uh, full screen if you want to do a demo or a presentation, uh, hide collection, sidebar, form view, table view, and various simple things. You can back up to cloud if you wish, cloud synchronization. Uh, there is a couple of defined ones. They get Dropbox, Mega, and a generic one containing folders if you want to define your own, which is pretty handy. Let's cancel that. So, yes, and this general preferences you can change the appearance, uh, startup, cloud sync, change the directory that you save to change uh, something like background color text font etc so you're going to change the background color you're going to change it to something like beige and it doesn't really apply until the program's restarted which is unfortunate it would have been nice for it to uh, change on the fly but you can't have everything and yes a few other things that you can tweak it's very good of course you can change the cloud uh, sync stairs, so you can disable it or enable it. Software reset if you wish to undo any changes that you've just done. So yes, very nice. It's a simple database and it's something that we'll find quite handy actually. You can rearrange how this looks if you uh, don't like it. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, you change your mind. It's just a simple matter of dragging and dropping. And if you want to modify any fields, you can add fields uh, and delete them if you wish. So I'm just going to change the name one into a forename. I'm going to create a new, uh, oh, I'm going to press the wrong one then, create a new field. And that's going to be surname. So text. And change it to surname. And there we are, so we've got a new, and it's going to be required like the forename. So it's coloured pink. Drag that up there. So now you have to enter a forename and a surname. So I'm just going to delete half the robo nuggy and just type in nuggy there. And number, we'll leave that alone. In fact, I might move that back up there. And we'll change the picture there. So very good, a simple database. If all you want to do, and there's the the table view if you wish. You can uh, arrange the table view separately from what it looks like on the form view. And it doesn't affect the other. There we go, just put surname now. And we just restart the program and the uh, beige color in which I applied earlier is now there. So that was quite nice. Reminds me of an OS2 program. I think Symphytum is uh, a lovely little program. I think it's it, it reminds me of the earlier days of simple databases that you could just set up and get going straight away without having to learn uh, <laughs> an entire suite of software just to have a simple database. Of course, it doesn't compared to some of the bigger database softwares that you can get, of course. But then again, it's not meant to. It's a personal database. So if you've got a collection of, oh, I don't know, stamps, uh, holiday photographs, 
contacts, uh, magazines, which I actually could do with uh, making a little backup, a little uh, database of magazines that I've got. Magazine cover disc, anything you want really, something simple. This will be just the, the ticket. So it's a, a lovely program. Support the developers if you want. And if you want a simple database, you can't go wrong with this. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software.